This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle by StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your own freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on, guys? So in this video, I want to talk about maximizing the programming tutorials that you're watching, how to get the most of them and also move past them and create your own projects. Because I, I think a lot of new developers get stuck in, in tutorial or course purgatory and they don't really know how to move on from that. You know, I'm a self-taught developer and I remember being in this position years ago. I feel like I'm busting my ass doing a course on Udemy or something like that, some other platform. And you feel like you're learning a lot, but after it's done, you move on to try to take what you've learned and create something on your own. And it's, it's really tough and you feel like you're stuck. Um, and I know a lot of people get into this, into this pattern uh, and some people even end up quitting. So I just want to give you five simple tips and elaborate on each one uh, of, of, for how to get out of the spot and start creating your own projects and also uh, expanding upon the tutorials that you're watching. All right, so number one is to continue the tutorial. It's only going to take you so far if you simply copy the code and move on. So my advice would be for, you know, when you watch a, a video, a tutorial, a course, whatever it may be, whether it's mine or someone else's, take the project that was created, if there is a project, and add to it. Change it, experiment with it. Don't just copy the code and move on to the next tutorial. Let's take my latest series, for instance, where we built a GraphQL server and we used the SpaceX API to... Um, show the launch data inside of a React app. So the SpaceX API has a ton of data and resources. I, I only used a fraction of it. You could extend that application to make further requests from the API and have the app give you give much more data. You know, you could change the style of it. You could add more routes to add more pages to the, the front end. You could use Angular instead of React or Vue or something like that. Um, you could add on a little forum or something. And it's going to take some extra research, which I'm going to get to in a minute, but you'll get a lot more out of it. And if there's no project, if it's like just a learn the basics type video, try to create a project from it. And I'm sure there's, there's much better examples that I could come up with, but this is just off the top of my head. The main point is just don't settle for the final product. Uh, make it better and, and make it your own. So tip number two is to build something new. And what I mean by this is take the core principles that you learn in the tutorial or the course and create something completely different. Even using the, the same SpaceX app example, you could recreate the, uh, the something completely new using the same technologies, but just use a different API. So you can make it into a whole new app that isn't even related to SpaceX just by changing the endpoints and the data. Uh, you could use the GitHub API or the Spotify API or any of the many others. I'm actually going to put a link in the description to a huge list of public APIs by Todd Motto. And I use this all the time to come up with ideas for projects and their APIs of all different complexities. Uh, I'd also encourage you to combine tutorials. Let's say in one tutorial, I show you how to create a REST API with Node and Express using Mongoose and MongoDB as a database. And then in another, I show you how to create queries and mutations with GraphQL. So you could combine these two tutorials together and create a project where you make queries and mutations from GraphQL to a MongoDB database. And that's just one example. You can take a front end React tutorial and mix it with a Laravel tutorial and create a full stack application. Yes, you're going to have to do some extra work as far as research on how to integrate both of them together. But that type of work using your brain in that way, it's crucial in becoming successful. And that brings us directly to number three, which is research and more research. So a big chunk of your time in your career will be searching how to do something, how to integrate technologies and so on. In the real world, nothing is handed to you like it is in a tutorial. You need to do the work to find the answers. And this is something that a lot of new developers don't understand. They think that you take a bunch of courses, you watch a bunch of YouTube tutorials, and you're just going to get it like something clicks and, and now you know how to do everything. And it doesn't work like that. When I was doing client work and working as a developer, a huge amount of my time was, was spent combing through documentation, asking questions, looking at other people's code on GitHub, 
um, you know, that was somewhat related to what I was doing. And I still do this to come up with projects and tutorials for you guys. So when I come up with, for instance, the real estate app we do in the Django course or the social network in my Mernstat course, I research until my head hurts. You have to really dig deep sometimes in a way that a, a tutorial can't teach you. You have to do stuff on your own. I think that tutorials and courses to me are about 50% of my learning and then 50% is combing through documentation, searching Google, GitHub, stuff like that. You almost have to be like a, a pro Google searcher to be a great developer. You need to be able to find answers. Uh, of course, if you have team members or other humans that are actually there with you to help, that's very, very beneficial. Um, but you, you know, you'll never get to the point where you just know everything and sit down in front of an editor or an IDE and just go to town without having to do any research. The only way that you're going to do that is if all your projects are pretty much the same and you never do anything new, which isn't that fun at all. Um, also, when you watch a tutorial and you get to a part where you don't understand something, maybe the instructor didn't ex explain it well enough, and I've been guilty of this many times, um, pause the video and, and do some research about that specific concept or function, whatever it may be, until you fully understand it. You know, just copying a line of code, it's not providing any knowledge if you're not understanding what it does. So you at least need to get the gist of it. And sometimes you might have to watch three or four different tutorials by three or four different instructors or, or content creators um, with multiple explanations so that you can really grasp that concept. So research is very, very important. Uh, tip number four is to use alternate resources in addition to tutorials and courses. There's a lot of helpful development and programming related videos and channels that are not actually coding tutorials but offer a lot of good information about strategy, um, the development industry, tips and tricks, new technology, and the list goes on. Um, this video you're watching now is a good example. This isn't a tutorial, but you're still gaining knowledge from it. Um, you have channels like Coding Tech, which has a lot of conference talks. Channels like Chris Hawks, who doesn't really do many tutorials, but offers a lot of useful information as far as the industry goes. Um, you have podcasts like Syntax FM, which is fantastic and gives you uh, different types of knowledge that tutorials don't. How to increase your productivity, stuff like that. And these are things that will help you become a better and well-rounded developer. And it's important to expand uh, uh, the, your learning resources beyond tutorials. So number five is to talk to and interact with other developers. If you have a dev job, this is probably something that you do every day, but if you're still learning, there's things you can do to start interacting in the community. You could join a Discord server or a Slack channel. Uh, I actually started the developer hangout on Discord, which, is, which has a very engaged and helpful community. You could go to a meetup. Meetups are probably one of the best things that you could do to network and get to know other developers and learn from them. You could ask and answer questions on Stack Overflow. I know there's a lot of trolls and know-it-alls out there, but just ignore those types because there are a lot of people that actually are there to help and will take the time to answer your questions. And if you answer questions yourself, that's a good way to not only learn, but also help others at the same time. You could also contribute to an open source project. That's a good way to get into the community and start interacting, start talking about code. Um, if you can find someone to work on a project with and, and pair program, that's very helpful because you have someone that you can use to bounce ideas off of and um, just learn how they do things. I know this stuff can be difficult. I'm a, a very introverted person to the point where I actually have social anxiety, but I've always found interacting with other programmers very, very helpful in learning all kinds of different stuff in different areas. All right, so that's it, guys. Hopefully you can take something from these tips and, and start thinking outside the box when it comes to learning. Like I said, tutorials and courses, they're very, very important. At least to me, I think they're the, the base of, of being a self-taught developer, but it's, it's only part of it. You need to start creating your own projects, even if they're just slightly different from what you watch in a tutorial. So thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. If you can follow me on social media, I would highly appreciate that, and thanks.
Hey guys, one of the best, if not the best resource I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing. The creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it. You get a 130 page guide to freelancing and it comes with things like invoice templates, client proposals, HTML and CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community and much more. So use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off today.